There are three drinks which are largely considered the holy trinity of American cocktails. The Old Fashioned, the Manhattan, and of course the Sazerac. And while the Sazerac's history is largely shrouded from view, the history that we do know is fascinating and wrapped in a lot of misconceptions. So today I thought we'd do a deep dive into this drink, learn a little bit about it, make a few versions of it, all of which are essential for anybody interested in cocktails anyway. And I just want to let you guys know that what I'm going to say might piss some of you guys off because it flies in the face of a lot of the history that you've been told. But first, a word from our sponsor. Today's video sponsor is Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN service, and if you don't know what that means, it means virtual private network. Basically, when you are on the internet, a VPN puts a mask on your identity and blurs out what you're doing so that people cannot spy on you and see what you're doing in the internet. This will keep you safe from hackers and make sure that uh, companies cannot buy and sell your information if you don't want them to. And another great feature is you can also change your location. When I was in Italy last year, this would be very handy. For instance, I wanted to watch HBO Max, and guess what? HBO Max is not in Italy. Disney Plus, when my kids wanted to watch something there, that's not in Italy either. But if I change my location, I get access to all of my streaming services. Think about a VPN like wearing pants, all right? You go outside, you wear some pants, and all of the important stuff is covered up. So go to surfshark.deals slash barfly or click the link below and type in barfly at checkout for 83% off any plan you choose plus three free months. Guys, this is risk-free. There's a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you're not fully satisfied with the service, you can cancel it and get your money back. The romanticized version of the Sazerac creation story is that it was created by a New Orleans apothecary named Antoine Amadie Peychaud sometime between 1830 and 1850. Peychaud had created a self-named bitters meant to be used as a curative because that's what bitters were used for at the time. And to help make the medicine go down a little easier, he would throw together a drink consisting of cognac, sugar, and of course, his bitters. This drink was famously served in an egg cup called a cocotier, and it was so good that it began to catch on all over the city. And presto change the Sazerac was born. Because of this story, many believe that it was the very first cocktail created, and that the word cocktail may be, in fact, a bastardized version of cocatier. The thing is that 19th century cocktail history is almost never that straightforward. This was a time that only one person deemed it worthy of recording cocktail recipes in a book, and the book wouldn't be published for another 30 years. This fact alone makes that story suspect. Add to that that we know for a fact that the Sazerac could not have been the first cocktail, seeing as we know that the word cocktail was defined in the May 13th, 1806 issue of the New York tabloid, The Balancing Columbian Repository. Given this information, the story is most probably bullshit. I'm sorry to say. The thing is, early cocktails were almost never just created wham bam, thank you ma'am. It's much more likely that like many of the first cocktails, the Sazerac was an evolution of the whiskey cocktail. Back in the day, before we had cocktails at all, we had a drink called a bittered sling, which was the combination of bitters with a little sugar and water mixed with any spirit at all to help the rot gut spirits being served at the time to be a little bit more palatable. This in turn gave birth to that whiskey cocktail I just mentioned. And there were of course offshoots of this cocktail using gin and brandy. As time went on and fancy liqueurs such as Curacao and Maraschino and even absence came from Europe and were becoming more commonplace, the improved cocktail emerged, taking a whiskey or a brandy cocktail and fancifying them. It's most probable that the first Sazeracs were actually improved brandy cocktails, and the evidence bears this idea out. If you take a look at the ingredients for an improved brandy cocktail, the recipe is pretty much identical to the Cognac Sazerac with a couple added extra flourishes. Many people are convinced that Cognac was the first Sazerac. The thing is, the very first mention of the Sazerac as a standalone cocktail was in 1899, and it was made with rye whiskey. And if you don't believe me, ask David Wondrich. He does a brilliant job of examining the cocktail's history, and if you want to read it, click the link below. He wrote it for uh, Daily Beast. It's amazing. As for the stories of the Sazerac House established in New Orleans in 1851, or the Phylloxera outbreak in France in 1863, which ended the importation of cognac to the States, or the popular cognac of the time being Sazerac de Forge at Phil's, fitting somehow into the story of the cocktail, I just can't say one way or the other. More research has to get done on that, or I gotta talk to David Wondrich about it himself to ask him questions. But it seems to me the stories of two very similar yet different drinks got entangled together into one story, and it was a good story. It just wasn't probably the true story. Alrighty, I think we've learned enough about this drink. Let's get into making a few versions of Sazerac and see how they hold up. We don't have an exact date when improved cocktails emerged. We know that they were written about in the Jerry Thomas Bon Vivant's Companion in 1862, and they probably emerged around there. The thing is, is that they never actually expanded into like a 
full category of drinks. And I think I read somewhere that out of like 3,000 books, like cocktail books, they're only mentioned like five or six times. It would be very, very fitting that the Sazerac and the Improved Brandy Cocktail got meshed up together. All right, so but we're gonna be making the Improved Brandy Cocktail. So the first thing we're gonna do is take our uh, glass here, and we're actually gonna be using the Boker's Bitters, which is the bitters that they would be using at the time. It calls for two dashes. This thing doesn't have a dasher on it, as you can see. So I'm gonna be doing it in drops. Two dashes is about 20 drops. So Boker's Bitters and Bogart's Bitters are pretty much the same thing. The thing is, is that nobody knows if they are Bogarts or Bokers because in different cocktail books, they are referred to as both of those names. Okay, so we're gonna do 20 drops of uh, Bogarts bitters. And then we're gonna do one teaspoon of simple syrup, half a teaspoon of maraschino liqueur, and then two ounces of cognac. We are not using the Sazerac to forge it fills, although the Sazerac company did revive that brand. Uh, it's a little bit pricey of a bottle at 125 to 130 or $40. But if anybody at the Sazerac wants to give us a bottle to review and taste and make a improved brandy cocktail or Sazerac with, we'd be very, very, very obliged. Now, just a little note on the glassware in this video, because I know all of you guys are gonna try and call me out for this, but Sazeracs were typically uh, served in a small, neat glass, kind of like a rocks glass, but a little smaller. I like my Sazeracs in stemware because I just think it looks good, and so I'm gonna do that for this cocktail and for the rest of the cocktails in this video. And if you guys uh, wanna take exception with that, I apologize, but it is uh, my channel and I can do what I want. So crack the first cubes. Add in some ice, that's enough, and give it a stir. It smells wonderful. So you wanna stir it for about 40 seconds or so. And it should be sufficiently chilled and diluted. And then the uh, recipe calls for one dash of absinthe, but I like to spray mine with a atomizer here. So I have my absinthe and atomizer, and we're just gonna do a couple of sprays, and we're going to strain. And it is garnished with a lemon peel. We're gonna zest it, and then you can discard it, but I think I like to kind of put it on the rim and make it look pretty. Oh, I kinda like the way that looks. And cognac has a lot of body. It's a little overly sweet. I don't know if I would have done a, a, a teaspoon of simple syrup in it, although it's not horrendously off balance. You've got the bokers in there bringing in nice bitterness, and then also it is bringing a little bit of spice as well. And then you have uh, the lemon, uh, plays really nice with the cognac. The cognac has a lot of body. You're getting a little bit of uh, texture from the simple syrup. And then on top of that, you get a nice dry sweetness from the Maraschino, if it were up to me, I would probably restructure this cocktail a little bit to be a little bit less sweet. I'm not sure if you really need that much simple syrup with uh, the cognac in there because it is maybe just a little bit overly sweet. Still a worthwhile cocktail and very nice. So there it is, the improved brandy cocktail. I would tell you guys when the Sazerac was invented, but this entire video is about when the Sazerac was invented. This is the Sazerac as I was taught it. Is it the 1899 version? I don't really know. Okay. So grab a glass here. I'm gonna do uh, some Peychaud's bitters here and we're gonna do four dashes. And that is four dashes out of this bottle because we're using the bottle, not the eight that you'd see me do out of the other one. And then we're going to do a sugar cube here. Put that in, let it soak up. And then we're just gonna do a tiny dash of soda water, tiny teensy tiny dash of soda water. And we're gonna grab a spoon with a muddler on the end of it. And we're just gonna muddle this in and kind of make a thick, simple syrup kind of out of it. You want to make sure that it remains a little grainy. Now we're going to take some rye whiskey. We're going to be using Sazerac rye here. We'll do two ounces of our rye. Crack that first piece. I want to crack it some more. There we go. Add some more in here. Put the old stir. Grab a chilled glass, and then we're gonna give it a nice wash of absinthe in here, just coating all of the surfaces evenly. And then of course, we're gonna strain it. And again, a lemon twist. And again, we're gonna make it look very pretty. 
I'm gonna do this a little bit differently. I did a parallelogram, but I made it very thin parallelogram. I like having these like little tiny swaths of like citrus peel on cocktails because it looks really good. And they're easy to manipulate and they stay curled as well. So similar to, but a little different than the last one. To me, this is it. It's so well balanced. You get the bitters, you get a little bit of sweetness from the sugar, you get that nice Creole kind of anise flavor that you get from the uh, Peychaud's bitters, and that pairs so well with the malty spice of rye. Rye has a really particular flavor. I call it malty. I'm not really sure if that is exactly the right descriptor for it, but for lack of a better term, that's what it, it kind of hits. It has a little dryness to it, and it also has a little spice to it because rye grain is just spicier than, you know, corn, which would be its uh, closest American whiskey counterpart. And it just, it just balances so well. And to me, the sugar doesn't throw this cocktail off balance, but the real test is gonna be when we taste a Cognac Sazerac done in this kind of late 1800s, early 1900s style. So there is the, I don't know, just the Sazerac, I guess. It's the Sazerac as I learned it. So the Cognac Sazerac is basically the same thing that we just did with the Rye Sazerac, but we're gonna be using Cognac as a base. So you guys pretty much know the drill at this point. Four dashes of Peychaud's bitters, a sugar cube, a little tiny dash of soda, and we're gonna give it a nice crushy poo. And two ounces of cognac. We're using the Pierre Ferrand 1840. That's a tiny one. I need another one. I need a bigger, bigger ice to smash. There we go. Add in some cubes. Give it the old whirly twirl. Whirl it for about 40 seconds. Take our stemware, hit it up with a nice even coat of absinthe on all its sides, and strain. Hit it up with a twist. I think I'm gonna do the same garnish for every Sazerac. This one's a little less long than the last one though, so I don't know if it's gonna be. And it's a little thicker, so it's harder to harder to twist, but there we go. That's kind of nice though. Let's see what it said. There's just so much more body to that than the rye whiskey, and it also has a little bit more residual sweetness. Of course, cognac is made out of grapes, and it's a little sharper in flavor, and then it also has a little more residual sweetness. I feel like the sugar might be a little too much. Now, we did a sugar cube, so the sugar is gonna be on a little bit of a time release. There is actually granulated sugar in here that is going to dissolve as we drink, and it's gonna get a little sweeter and a little sweeter, which I think is not really gonna do this justice. The cognac pairs really nicely with the uh, absinthe, and it also pairs really nicely with the uh, Peychaud's, and then the Peychaud's, because it has anise in it, also pairs really nicely with that absinthe as well, and you get those anise flavors. This is one of those cocktails that I like to illustrate for people who don't really like absinthe flavor. Absinthe really hits a people because of the anise like black licorice, which isn't my favorite either. But in certain contexts, it is really, really nice to have. And this is one of those. So if you don't like absinthe, you should definitely try either a cognac or a rice Sazerac. And I think you will find in that context, just really nice. I gotta say, it's not my favorite Sazerac. To me, it's a little overly sweet. I know a lot of people stand by the Sazerac, and I'm sorry, but uh, I don't like it as much as I like it with rice. So there it is, guys, the Cognac Sazerac. So apparently this next Sazerac is called a New York Sazerac. We always just referred to it as a split base Sazerac, where you split the base of rye and cognac, which is what we're gonna do. But in Australia, if you call for a Sazerac, they do it with a split base, and it's known as a New York Sazerac. Now, I don't know this from personal experience, but I bet you that two people I know, Steve and Kara, can weigh in on this and tell me if that's actually true. Either way, we're still gonna do it. So. First thing we're gonna do, four dashes of Peychaud's. Put in our sugar cube here. Little dash of soda. A little bit bigger of a little dash, but it's fine. And then we're gonna crush up our sugar cube here. Make sure to not completely eviscerate the entire thing. We are gonna do one ounce of cognac and one ounce of this really nice Sagamore rye. Stir to combine a little bit more. And then we're gonna hit up our glass with an even coat of absinthe and strain. Got a really nice peel off of it. Let's try it. I 
gotta say, I don't know, I think that might be my favorite, the split base. You get the best of both worlds, you know, and it's funny because when you taste it, you get the paste shards right up front, you get the sugar, you get the absinthe, but then you get that back palate dryness from the rye and it builds to the cognac sweetness. It's really crazy. It's like two different flavors in one almost. It's a really nicely balanced. I like it. I there's not much more I can say about it. I think I, I think that that was a pretty apt uh, description of how it kind of builds on your palate. So there you have it, the New York Sazerac. All right, guys, there it is. An exhaustive, well, hopefully it wasn't too exhausting. Hopefully it was uh, fun and happy and entertaining to watch this history on the Sazerac. I think this is a fascinating cocktail. I love going deep into history and finding out things that I didn't know. I was also one of those people who subscribed to the whole Sazerac, I guess we can call it the Sazerac myth at this point. I was very surprised to find out all of this, uh, I don't know, kind of different history. And so I hope this has been very entertaining, but also enlightening and educational for you guys. And I will see you guys on another time. So today's pro tip is a little bit less of a pro tip and more of just, well, like maybe it's a pro tip, but specifically for the Sazerac. Historically, when it comes to old fashions and Sazeracs, you make them with sugar cubes. And when I make old fashions, I am a stickler for making it with sugar cubes because that cocktail is sitting on ice and the sugar dissolves over time and you get a little bit more evolution in the glass. The texture is really nice and um, it goes up from a little bit stiffer on the front end of your drink when you start drinking it to a little bit more sweet when you're finished drinking it. Uh, and then you get a little sugar pop, a little kind of whiskey, you know, bitter sugar pop at the end, which then, you know, releases dopamine in your brain and leads you to the next cocktail. But for a Sazerac, because it doesn't sit on ice, it might be more sensible to make it with simple syrup, which gives you a much more even and consistent uh, flavor and texture in your cocktail. So there you have it. When you, when you make Sazeracs, make them with simple syrup.